ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு தி எயிட்டீன்த் வீடியோ ஆன் ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் சர்டிஃபிகேஷன் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி வெரி வெரி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் விச் இஸ் கேஷிங் ஐ ஹோப் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி அவேர் ஆஃப் கேஷிங் பட் ஹவு ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் இஸ் யூட்டிலைசிங் கேஷிங் இஸ் தி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் திங் டு நோ நவு பிஃபோர் டேக்கிங் இன் டு தி ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக்ஸ் கிளா கேஷிங் லெட் அஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் தி நார்மல் கேஷிங் தட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் இஃப் சம் ஒன் இன் தி குரூப் இஸ் நாட் அவேர் ஆஃப் கேஷிங் மஸ்ட் ஹவ் டு நோ வாட் கேஷிங் இஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் இஃப் யூ ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி அவேர் ஆஃப் தி கேஷிங் ப்ளீஸ் ஃபாஸ்ட் ஃபார்வர்ட் திஸ் வீடியோ டு சம் எக்ஸ்டெண்ட் அண்ட் தென் யூ கேன் சி தி ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ரிலேட்டட் கேஷிங் ஆஸ்பெக்ட்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் வாட் இஸ் கேஷிங் சே ப்ளீஸ் சி திஸ் பிக்சர் இஃப் ஐ எம் ஹேவிங் அன் அப்ளிகேஷன் அண்ட் தெர் இஸ் சம்திங் கால்ட் எஸ் எ கேஷ் இயர் first what the application will do application will try to read the data from the cache if it gets the data from the cache it is called as the cache hit and then obviously that data will be returned out say if it is a cache miss then only it will go and read the data from the database and then it will write it back to the cache as well this is what the caching is all about why caching is important caching will provide you higher speed with respect to the data access and latency Simple simply if you see in this picture if a application gets the data from database it is a longer process compared to getting the data from cache why because cache sits very nearer to the application as simple as it is now you can imagine this application as the user within the snowflake so snowflake's caching will help you to enhance your queries to fasten your queries to a greater extent so caching is the process of storing the results of the results at a different location than the original or a temporary storage location so that we can avoid redoing the same operations interesting thing to know cache is the temporary storage for the files it provides a faster access to this data from its cache snowflake checks and see whether a query that has previously run and if so whether the results are still cached snowflake will use the cache the result set if it is still available rather than executing the query if you already just submitted as simple as it is so the same concept of caching applies within the snowflake now this is the snowflake architecture diagram which we already saw to a greater extent in this if you identify there are three different caches which are available for your easy understanding i am just boxing it so there are two caches which are available within the cloud services layer those are result cache and metadata cache and there is one cache which is available within the compute layer which is the warehouse cache in this video we are going to discuss about these three caches to a greater extent first one is the query results cache as we already saw this is part of the cloud services layer in the snowflake architecture the fastest way to retrieve the data from snowflake is using the query results cache again please pay more attention towards the naming convention which is used there it is query results meaning what whatever the results of the query will be cached at the query services layer so if i can fire a same query again instead of doing all the operations say if you see it will go from the services layer to warehouse layer to the cloud storage layer it will not do any of those things simply it will take the data from cloud services and send it back to me as simple as it is that is the greatest advantage of the results cache here so the results of the snowflake query are cached and persisted for 24 hours and then purged okay so 24 hours this specific results cache will be available for you even though the results cache only persists for 24 hours the clock is reset each time the query is re executed up to the maximum of 31 days from the date and time when the first query was executed i hope you understand this to a clearer extent let me provide you a simple example say i am fire 
answering a query now right it will be cached in the results cache it will be purged after 24 hours say i didn't fire a same query within the next 24 hours it will be purged it will not be used but within the 24 hours if i can fire the same query again from that time it will be persisted for another 24 hours this pattern will be rolled out for the sequence of 31 days only after the 31 days of the first query submission then only the results will be purged so within 24 hours if you are firing the same query again and again your query results will be available in the results cache as simple as it is after 31 days or sooner if the underlying data changes a new result set is generated and cached when query is submitted again another important caveat to note that is why i underlined that underlying data changes say what if my base data got changed then also this cache needs to be refreshed then it will go through the normal operation and then only it will refresh this specific results cache so if there is some change in the underlying data obviously the cache will be purged and the results cache is fully managed by snowflakes cloud services layer query results returned to one user is also available to any user who has necessary access privileges and who executes the same query another important point to note say if you enabled the query results cache it is not only for one specific user it will be available for the other user with the successive privileges as well any user can run a query against the results cache with no running virtual warehouse needed assuming the query is cached and the underlying data has not changed this is again the same thing but for your understanding you need to understand if you are utilizing this results cache there is no need to go bottom beyond this specific layer on the architecture only cache that can be disabled by using the parameter is the query results cache the other two caches cannot be disabled if you disable it using alter session set to use cached result equal to false if you do so this specific results cache will be disabled right disabling the results cache is necessary if you are doing a b testing and important to enable the results caching once your testing is completed the second caching layer in the cloud services layer is the metadata cache again the name is very self explanatory in this picture that is represented in the red box snowflake connects and manages metadata about tables micro partitions and even the clustering data snowflake's metadata cache stores the following information we can see lot of information here snowflake stores the row count table size file references table versions range of values in terms of min and max null count number of distinct values total number of micro partitions depth of overlapping micro partitions all the details are stored in here the metadata cache is again completely managed by snowflake cloud services layer the information stored in the metadata cache is used to build the query execution plan or the least expensive path which we already discussed now let us see some of the queries which can be utilizing the metadata cache show tables if i fire a show tables query it will smoothly fetch the data from the metadata cache select count of star from the specific table name now again it is a metadata operation here you can see it stores the row count so this is the row count select count of star is again a metadata only operation another very very interesting query you can see select count of star as customer count min of birth year max of birth year from the table customer this query on seeing it it seems to be a complicated query which involves lot of aggregation operation but the metadata cache stores all this information you can see row count min max everything is stored in the metadata cache so while firing this query as well it will smoothly use the metadata cache only so these are all some interesting thing to know so please pay more attention towards that as simple as it is name again is self explanatory all the metadata related information is cached within the metadata cache moving on to the third caching layer within snowflake which is the warehouse cache again name is self explanatory it is all about the cache which is available within your virtual warehouses the traditional snowflake data cache is specific to the virtual warehouse used to process 
the query running the virtual warehouses uses the solid state device storage you might be aware if not please do enough googling for it there are multiple ways by which we can store the data one traditional way of doing it is the hdd which is the hard disk drive which we use for longer duration of time but with the advancements of technology there is something called ssd drives came in ssd is very very fast compared to the hdd so whatever the data which is stored in the solid state devices can be accessed in a very very quicker way so here the virtual warehouses utilizes the ssd storage to store the micro partitions that are pulled from the centralized database storage layer when a query is processed try to understand whatever at the bottom layer on the cloud database storage layer whenever a query is getting processed the micro partitions are pulled into the warehouse layer and all the processing happens within the warehouse layer only here those data are stored within that ssd cache for the specific warehouse the size of the virtual warehouse ssd cache is is determined by the size of the virtual warehouse compute resources so if you go with a smaller t-shirt size of x small or small the ssd storage is very minimal if you use the largest of the type 6x large then your ssd will be very very high whenever a virtual warehouse receives a query to execute that warehouse will scan the ssd cache first before accessing the snowflakes remote disk storage try to understand this say whenever i fired a query for the first time the data of all the micro partitions even the data itself will be cached in the compute layers cache now if i fire a slightly different query but it utilizes the same micro partitions means it won't go to the database layer it will try to pull the data from the same cache itself that is the thing which is mentioned in this specific statement reading from ssd is faster than reading from the database storage that is very evident but still requires the use of running virtual warehouse that is again important thing to know referred as the raw data cache or ssd cache or data cache if you see any of these terminologies it is the warehouse cache only important thing this cache will be dropped once the virtual warehouse is suspended it is pretty explanatory as well since it is attached to the specific virtual warehouse if the specific warehouse got suspended or terminated obviously the cache associated with that warehouse is also going to be terminated again something to know see how to find the data scanned from cache it can be done using the query history view so the bytes scanned and bytes scanned percentage from cache this can be seen in the statistics information as well on the query profiler but very well we can utilize the query history as well to find this specific information with this we came to end of this video in this it's a shorter video we discussed about three different caching mechanisms within snowflake but it is very very important for your understanding and also for your exam some point of view i hope this video has been informative for you please do write lot of comments that will help me to enhance the contents of the videos thank you very much for watching this video